close your book and put your notes away. Now, try to write or sketch everything you know about the idea you're trying to learn. You won't remember all of it, but that's okay. This will help you get there. When you've exhausted your knowledge, open up the book again, grab your notes, and start to determine what you've missed and what you need to work on more. Bringing information to mind from memory like this is called retrieval practice. To do it properly, you have to put your class materials away. Forcing yourself to bring information to mind is good. When you have your book or your class notes open in front of you, they serve as a sort of crutch. And when you rely on your class materials, you don't learn as much. Practicing retrieval can be hard, but as you continue to practice, it will get easier and you won't need to look at your notes as often. Then, when it comes time to take the exam, it will be easier to remember the information. There are many different ways to practice retrieval. Take any practice test you can get your hands on. If you don't have one, make your own. Or you can try practicing retrieval with a friend. What's a neurotransmitter? Chemicals in the nerves. How do neurons communicate? In the synapse. Why was Freud so obsessed no, with No, 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 no. I'm not going to answer that one. Just answer questions often and make sure you space out your retrieval practice. Need to learn more about spacing out your studying? Check out our spacing video. You can also use flashcards. When you try to answer a question on the card, that's retrieval practice. It's inexpensive and easy to do. But do try to answer the question from memory. Don't just flip the card. Whatever your method, make sure you put your notes away and bring the information to mind. It's effective. It's backed by science. One more thing. Don't just memorize definitions. Yeah, defining things is important, but what's more important is knowing the main idea of a lesson and how you can apply it. Let's use classical conditioning as an example. If I were to memorize the definition, I would know that. Classical conditioning is a learning process that occurs when two stimuli are repeatedly paired together. A response that is at first elicited by the second stimulus is eventually elicited by the first stimulus alone. But do you really know what that means? Sure, it's a learning process that occurs when two stimuli stop, are repeated. Stop, That definition is full of jargon, and reciting it like that, word for word, probably won't help you much on the exam. Instead, try to explain what you think it really means, but in your own words. Maybe try to use a concrete example. Well, Pavlov was studying dogs in his lab, but he started to notice that they were salivating before he even gave them the food. So he started pairing another stimulus, like a bell, with the food, and pretty soon the dogs would salivate when they heard the bell, and that's classical conditioning. The food is the unconditioned stimulus, and salivating is the unconditioned response. This happens naturally. The bell is the conditioned stimulus, and salivating is the conditioned response, and this happens after learning, or classical conditioning. Yes.